Welcome back, everybody. Two things before we get started. If you can like and subscribe, I'd be greatly, greatly appreciative. The second thing is there are chapter markers all throughout the video. If there's anything specific that you're looking for, go ahead and click on it. But either way, let's get right into it. Today we have the Jordan Tatum 2, the follow-up to Jason Tatum's first signature shoe, the Tatum 1. When it comes to signature shoes, you really don't know what you're gonna get from one shoe to the next. Obviously, Jason Tatum's line is very early in its life, but going from the one to the two, it isn't looking to do a drastic redesign. It really is just iterating on what made the Jason Tatum 1 a success and kind of building on top of that. Now, when it comes to the unboxing experience, it is literally the same exact packaging as the Tatum 1, all the way down to the tissue paper. Basically, you have like a wood grain or fingerprint material on the outside of the box. It's in a glossy color matched pattern, um, but exactly the same packaging as the very first Tatum shoe. Now, that's that may be for marketing budget purposes or whatever the case may be, or just for consistency, but you feature Jason Tatum's signature on the very front, and then again, that pattern all throughout the shoe. Now, when it comes to the design of the Tatum 2 and its launch colorway dubbed Mama's Boy, it features an all white, relatively clean upper with calla lilies printed all throughout. It features hits of Volt, Hyper Pink, and splashes of black on the tongue and the sock liner. Structurally, the Tatum 2 is very similar to the Tatum 1 in that they brought a lot of those design cues over from the Tatum 1 that really worked for the Tatum 1. For instance, that foam structure that was on the lateral side of the Tatum 1 is now on the Tatum 2 in the form of two foam pods on the lateral side and the medial side. Now, obviously that's functional design because it's a design aesthetic, but also functions as containment for your foot. From a design perspective, I think the Tatum 2 is a very good looking shoe. The side profile, the top down view, the silhouette of the shoe, it's just very good looking. This colorway particularly isn't one of my favorites, but I'm really intrigued to see what they do with the colorways and the stories they tell. When it comes to the materials for the Tatum 2, they're okay. There's nothing premium about it, but at $125, you really shouldn't expect anything high-end or premium at that price point. Features canvas all throughout the upper of the shoe, and then it actually has like a synthetic suede or nubuck on the tongue of the shoe. Speaking of weight, the Tatum 1 went a different direction in terms of outsole. Rather than putting rubber on its heel part of the outsole, it went with straight foam. And what you sacrifice is some durability for the outsole and really just wearing that down, especially if you're playing on outdoor courts. But what you get in return is less weight on the shoe, which means you know faster recovery, more stamina when you're playing. The Tatum 2 brings back rubber to the heel of the shoe and in the form of two pods, one on the forefoot and one on the heel, but it also features a hard rubber outline around those pods and then a rubber tip on the actual toe box. Now with the added rubber on the outsole, it actually took the Tatum 2 to 15.8 ounces over the 14.6 ounces from the Tatum 1 respectively, and those are both in a size 12. In my experiences in playing in the Tatum 2, I didn't have any issues with fatigue or stamina or anything like that, but also I don't have a one-to-one -one comparison because I never actually played in the Tatum 1. Now, when it comes to the fit of the Tatum 2, they fit surprisingly well. Going true to size, I really wasn't sure what I was gonna get, but getting them on foot for the first time, it was almost perfect. Now, obviously I'm a wide footer. For anyone with narrow feet or normal size feet, you're probably gonna have some issues with a lot of room in the toe box and in the shoe itself. So you're probably want, gonna wanna try these in store before actually making a decision to purchase. Over on the containment side, I had some initial issues with the heel slip, but tying my shoes a little bit tighter than I normally would fix that problem right from the start, but playing in the shoe, my foot was securely on the footbed. I had no issues with my foot slipping off the footbed or anything like that. So containment was actually pretty good. Breathability was a real issue for the Tatum 2. There's no real ventilation or perforations on the shoe itself. You don't have anything on the toe box, medial or lateral sides, with the exception of the tongue having some perforations. But to be honest with you, there isn't a whole lot of like ventilation coming up through that top part of the shoe. So everything's just kind of trapped in the shoe itself and your feet are just gonna roast. And in normal conditions, it was getting pretty uncomfortable. If you're playing outdoors on a warm day, it's gonna get even worse. Now when it comes to cushioning, the Tatum 2 swaps out that Zoom bag that was found on the Tatum 1 and actually replaces it with a full length Max Air Strobel. The last time I played on the Max Air Strobel unit was on the PG4 and that was one of my favorite implementations just because it was a very comfortable shoe. You could feel the air underfoot and this shoe specifically sat right on the actual Strobel unit. 
Now the implementation of Max Air Strobel on the Tatum 2 wasn't as responsive as it was on the PG4. In this implementation, it was a little bit more firm in the forefoot, which actually gave you a little bit more court feel than say for instance, the PG4, which is a little bit higher off the ground with that thicker midsole. Now I think that was actually by design because what you get in return is court feel and a lot of feedback from the court itself. And now in the heel part, it was a little bit more soft, a little bit more plush, and a little bit more responsive in terms of that cushioning. Now overall in playing in the Tatum 2, I had no real issues with cushioning whatsoever. Again, it was a little bit more firm in the forefoot, but again, that trade-off comes with more court feedback and court feel, and then you had a little bit more impact protection in the heel. Overall, I think you'll be happy with the cushioning in the Tatum 2. Now when it comes to the traction for the Tatum 2, it features two rubber traction pods, one on the forefoot and one on the heel. And then they're outlined by this harder rubber that is, I'm assuming, for quick cuts and things of that nature. You feature a little bit of a hit of rubber on the outrigger area and then at the very tip of the toe box. Now overall, playing in the Tatum 2, I was pretty let down by the traction itself just because I never really got any good footing or good grip on the court no matter how many times I wiped and this is on a relatively clean court. I found myself slipping and sliding everywhere. I would wipe and I still had my foot sliding down the court and in reality when you are playing on bad traction or a dusty court you're exerting more energy to get yourself moving. When you're exerting that kind of energy you're going to get kind of worn out pretty quickly. And it's kind of like running on sand. When you run on sand you're exerting more energy to get to where you want to go. Now when it comes to my recommendation, the Tatum 2 priced at $125 from a design perspective is a great looking shoe that features some really cool technologies. From a performance standpoint, it's hard to recommend the Tatum 2 just because of that traction alone. In my opinion, it is a deal breaker. Again, priced at $125, it's not gonna break the bank, but I think there are better options available at similar price points. That'll just about do it for this video. If there's anything you wanna know about the Tatum 2 or anything that I missed, please leave a comment. If you liked this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a good day.